THE SPHINX by Edgar Allan Poe This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Reading by Bologna Times THE SPHINX by Edgar Allan Poe during the dread reign of the cholera in New York, I had accepted the invitation of a relative to spend a fortnight with him in the retirement of his cottage on the banks of the Hudson. We had here around us all the ordinary means of summer amusement, and what with the rambling in the woods, sketching, boating, fishing, bathing, music, and books, we should have passed the time pleasantly enough, but for the fearful intelligence which reached us every morning from the populous city. Not a day elapsed which did not bring us news of the decease of some acquaintance. Then, as the fatality increased, we learned to expect daily the loss of some friend. At last we trembled at the approach of every messenger. The very air from the south seemed to us redolent with death. That palsying thought indeed, took entire possession of my soul. I could neither speak, think, nor dream of anything else. My host was of a less excitable temperament, and although greatly depressed in spirits, exerted himself to sustain my own. His richly philosophical intellect was not at any time affected by unrealities. To the substances of terror, he was sufficiently alive, but of its shadows he had no apprehension. His endeavors to arouse me from the condition of abnormal gloom into which I had fallen were frustrated, in great measure, by certain volumes which I had found in his library. These were of a character to force into germination whatever seeds of hereditary superstition lay latent in my bosom. I had been reading these books without his knowledge, and thus he was often at a loss to account for the forcible impressions which had been made upon my fancy. My favorite topic with me was the popular belief in omens, a belief which, at this one epoch of my life, I was almost seriously disposed to defend. On this subject we had long and animated discussions, he maintaining the utter groundlessness of faith in such matters. I, contending that a popular sentiment arising with absolute... Sample complete. Ready to continue?